Okay, so this is the opening screen for GTO Wizard. You get a bunch of different options. What we're going to do, look at in this video, is we're going to look at the solutions, which is where all of the pre-existing solutions are um, stored. So if you look at the top right of this, sorry, top left of the screen, you can see MTT chip EV. If, if, if we click on that, you'll see that there's actually a bunch of different options. Um, you, you have different stack sizes, uh, different formats. Um, you, we have cache solutions, MTT solutions, spin and go, heads, heads up, sitting goes. These, these are all uh, sort of standalone products. So you, I think you have to buy them separately. Um, but obviously, if you're an MTT player, you'll just pretty much want to look at MTTs. They are constantly adding new spots. Um, so they have Chip EV and they have ICM. At the moment, the ICM is only for preflop. So, um, but they have post-flop solutions for Chip EV, but only for eight max as well. They're presumably going to add for six max and nine max later on, and they'll add ICM as well. As I said, they're adding all the time, but you can see they have different stack sizes as well. A hundred big blinds down to two big blinds. In, the, in our book, we use 40 big blinds, and there was a reason for that. The reason is that's the point at which uh, most of the interesting post-flop solutions kick in. A lot of important decisions are made in the 40 big blind zone. That's typically you know, fairly late into a tournament uh, where everybody has roughly 40 big blinds. When we get shallower than that, it's mostly just going to be post-flop. You're going to be shoving or reshoving pre-flop. And when we're deeper than that, it tends to be very early in the tournament. So 40 big blinds is a very important zone for MTT players to study and understand. So we'll go ahead and look at 40 big blinds. Now you can see there again at the top of the screen, they have all the different positions under the gun, uh, can either fold, raise to 2.3 big blinds or go all in. I can't imagine there's going to be much going all in. You can see, you can actually see there on the chart underneath it, for each hand on the grid, it also has what you do. So, for example, aces, we always uh, raise to 2.3. That's in light red, um, all the way down to ace three suited. Then ace two suited is in blue, which means it's a fold. We always fold. You'll notice that some hands are what we call a mix, which means that we do it some of the time and we uh, we do one uh, action some of the time and another action uh, the rest of the time. So king six suited, for example, half the time we're going to raise with that, half the time we're going to fold that. Um, so this is all basically pre-flop. So let's look at, a, at a, an actual spot. So we're going to do that by navigating the top. So under the gun, let's say there is 2.3 big blinds. Um, we don't have to click on it. You, we can say under the gun one folds. Now, if everybody folds, we don't have to do this with everybody. You can just go all, you can just move right across to the big blind. Uh, you don't have to click them all. Um, and when we come to the big blind and we click there, it again, this is what the big blind does in uh, with, with their entire range. You can see there's a small amount of shoving, but to be honest, it's there's so little shoving. Um, in practice, I would ignore that. Uh, Queen Jack suit is the only hand that sometimes shoves. Um, so the hands that are in light red are the hands that are raised. And again, you can see some hands are always raised. Obviously, aces and kings, ace, king suited, they're all being raised for value. Um, there's some weaker hands as well in there. Uh, nine, eight suited, ace, five off, etc. Just to kind of give you board coverage. So, so no matter what comes. But you'll notice that the hands just below the hands that are shoved for value, like ace, queen suited, or sorry, raised for value, um, they're not, uh, they're never raised because if we raised those hands, we'd be very sad if we got four bet. Um, it would be a very strong hand to fold to a four bet, uh, but it's not quite strong enough that we're happy to get four bet and have to call the four bet. Um, so the hands that we use as our bluffs, for want of a better word, are lighter three bets. Our hands like king nine suited, nine eight suited, ace ten off, that don't mind so much if they have to fold. Uh, to a four bet <clears throat> and also by having this range we we kind of have some semblance of board coverage admittedly we're not covering the bottom of the board but at least we have lots of hands that connect with lots of high card flops so what we're going to do now is we're going to just call and then, and then we're going to enter a specific flop so uh, under the gun is opened 2.3 big blinds the big blind defends and the flop comes down ace nine six all spades um, and the first thing we're going to do is just compare the two ranges against each other. Um, 
if if you look at uh, the top of top half of the screen, you can see the two ranges side by side. Uh, the the big blind um, on the left and under the gun on the right. Um, you can see at a glance that the um, big blind has just more complete whiffs. You know, a hand like king two suited, unless it's spades, obviously has just completely missed and is complete trash on this board. So they have a lot of that sort of uh, suited hands that have missed that are just complete trash. Um, whereas under the gun has uh, has had much fewer of those hands. Uh, if you look at the equity uh, advantage, you can see that it's 59% to 41% in favor of under the gun. So they have a fairly clear range advantage here. Um, and that's important to remember, even though um this is sort of a confusing flop where a lot of there are, there are some both players have some hands which normally wouldn't be very very strong you know a hand like king two of spades on almost every other flop wouldn't be very wouldn't be would, would never be a strong hand it would either be bottom pair a lot of the time or a weak top or second pair is, is actually the no flush on this board so mm -hmm. some hands are super super strong other hands are 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 are, are, are demoted um, you know, a hand like King Queen, for example, which would actually be pretty strong on this board. A lot, of, if if this was a ra um, a rainbow board, for example, is King Queen without a spade is kind of trashy on this board. If we look at the at the equity graphs, you can see um, the. Let's start with under the gun, the lower <clears throat> the lower graph. They have some really really weak hands, like down with ten percent equity. Um, which which uh, are are completely worthless and actually to get to even the hands that are not just trash under twenty five percent equity we have to move to thirty thirty five percent so they they have they, they actually have thirty seven point three percent hands you can see there on the right of the screen which are just trash um, so in a spot where the out of out of the position position player has trash um, you'll often see a lot of small betting. Or even checking, because giving a free card to a trash hand uh, isn't um, that much of a factor. You can see as we get up towards the top, though, the ranges do come together. Um, the, uh, the 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 defender actually has eleven percent of their range uh, fall into the very strong hand thing, which will be the flushes, obviously. Um, so this is a range where uh, under the gun has a, a fairly clear range advantage the whole way until we get to the very top. And then they kind of come together. Mm -hmm. So let's see how that affects the strategy. First of all, out of position, the solver is suggesting to do some betting. But if you actually look at the grid, there's no hand that bets more often than it checks. So this is a spot where I would just simplify my strategy. I'm not going to try and remember, okay, I should be raising some two pair. I should be betting, leading some two pairs. I should be leading some weak bottom pairs. I said, that's going to be too difficult to remember. And it, um, and it's instituting game and it'll make really no difference so i would just check range here so when the big blind checks now let's look at the response this is a spot where there is no point in go ahead of, uh, going ahead in range betting remember our opponent has lots of trash so yeah if we bet he'll fold their trash but that doesn't really benefit us in any way um uh, but and and there's another danger which is at the top of their range it actually comes together uh if you look at the equity buckets, you can see, yeah, we've got 19.3% of our range are very strong hands. But remember, they have um, a very high percentage as well. So at the at the very top, it's much closer together. So anytime that's the case where, where the player that you're betting into has mostly a very weak range, but they have some very strong hands, that's a spot where you never want to bet big. Because if you bet big, yeah, you fold all their trash, but you don't fold their really strong hands. So the big bet achieves absolutely nothing. So this is a spot where we're going to split between checking and betting small. Mm. And th this was um, this was quite a profound lesson for me personally, because I think I fell into the trap that a lot of amateur players uh, make, which is that you see the free spades on the flop and you suddenly are scared uh, to bet any of your value hands because you think that the um, you think that the player is especially a big blind defend which should be wide you think the player has either magically hit their flush or is never going to go away to any bet size um, so the thing I was really really surprised about was how much um, each hand in the range bets here 
and the fact that they bet quite small. I would have assumed that we would have been seeing the big aces and the sets bet big and, and not much else. Um, but, um, you know, if we go back to the Rangers, um, you know, all the strong hands here are centered around ASEX. Um, so it's, uh, you know, th this is what we call, um, I'll let you explain it, but this is what we call a static board where the, the best hand right now is usually still going to be the best hand uh, and a small bet is actually fine in these spots. Yeah, and that's, uh, the, the only uh, card that can come on later street that's really going to significantly change this board for a lot of hands is a spade. Mm. Um, if one player has a spade and the other doesn't, then obviously uh, the player with the spade has an advantage. But but on every other run out, whatever the best hand is right now is, is is almost certainly going to remain the best hand. So betting for equity denial doesn't make a lot of sense. The other thing is that even if we bet big, like we're not going to get the king of spades to fold. Um, that's that's going to continue anything. All we're, all we're essentially doing is bloating the pot. Um, and then if he hits his flush, uh, the pot is bigger. Um, if he misses, he'll just give up. But but this the, the small bet, what we're essentially doing with the small bet is making it tricky for him to decide which hands he has to fold and which hands he has to continue with. He's going to continue with his strong hands um, or, 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 or his strong uh, spade hands. But if we actually look at what happens, say we bet 33%. And you, you can see now that um, he, he, he basically, obviously he's continuing with all of his aces. Um, but he has to he has to actually start folding some of his nines. Uh, mm. If he if if he if he's calling all of his nines, he's calling too much. And this is a spot where an opponent could could, could go badly wrong. Uh, they they have to fold a lot of their sixes as well. Um, so this this is kind of a tricky spot for them to play. If 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 you uh, look at a hand like king queen off. So if you hover over king queen off and just look at what the different combinations do, you can see that with a spade. Obviously, the king of spades is always continuing. The queen of spades is always continuing. Without a spade, it's always folding. But it has to mix in some raises and some calls as well. Um, so the small bet achieves quite a lot. When, when, when we fold out the king queen with no spade, that's a good result. Uh, if we if we if we didn't have a made hand, um, uh, but uh, uh, but you know when we bet for value and he has the king of spades or the queen of spades, he's going to continue as well. Um, so we can get value. Um, I just wanted to uh, go back to my uh, sort of old school fishy kind of mentality because there was something else uh, with this particular hand example um, that really made uh, because uh, I, I learned, of course, that, you know, top pair bets a lot here and um, sorry, most hands bet here and for value and a small bet is fine. And that went against my fishy instinct of, uh, oh, my God, this is uh, a monotone board. We need to get a fold now. Um, if you. GTO Wizard actually kind of uh, shows you how many flushes uh, the big blind has got in the range and how many flush draws have got in the range. They've got 16%, 16% of the hands are a flush draw and just under 7% of the hands are um, a flush. So that's only like, um, you know, a quarter of the time that they're remotely interested in sort of the spade element of the yeah. floor. If we go back uh, one step, um, you know, similar situation for the under the gun player. Uh, they've got four percent of the time they've got a flush, and twenty percent of the time they've got a flush draw. And I, I looked at some other hands um, in the solvers, and this tends to be um, the same with any pairing of balanced ranges. Um, so um, it's you know, mo as as we mentioned, most of the time the top pair hand actually stays ahead by the river uh, by virtue of the fact that it's only around 25 percent of the time that your opponent is going to have um a flush or a flush draw so uh, for me that was very very helpful because it it made me a little bit happier about you know putting in several streets of small bet sizes in without fear of uh, getting outdrawn yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, I, I guess this is what we used to call monsters under the bed syndrome. We, we we kind of jump straight to worst case scenario thinking. And when this flop comes down, we go, oh, my God, he could have a flush. He could have a flush. But when you actually look at the amount of times he has a flush, it's very low. First of all, he has to have started with a suited hand. Secondly, it has to be this specific suit. And thirdly, there there's actually less combinations of this than the other suits. You know, if he's, call if, if he's calling all lots of suited hands, well, any of his ASEC suited isn't a flush because we can we can we can see the ace of on the board. So uh, he he only has ASEC of suited of the other three suits. Um, 
okay, he can he he'll, he'll have the, the same combinations of stuff like king queen suited etc. Uh, of all the suits, but again, you know, for every king queen of spades he has, he has three of the other suits as well. So mm -hmm. it makes up a much smaller percentage of the range than people think. Similarly, same thing applies to the flush draws. Um, you know, people go, oh my God, he just needs to have one spade. Yeah, but we can see one in the cards and, and it's pretty crucial that one of the cards is an ace because mm -hmm. a lot of his defending range will, will be an ace, but he can't have the ace of spades. So he's actually going to have way, he's going to have the spade way, way less often than, 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 than we think in this spot. Yeah. Um, so similarly, um, you can see a similar um, thing happening with the sets. So pocket sixes is uh, always played aggressively in this spot. Uh, pocket nines, a little bit less so, but most of the time. But pocket aces actually checks a lot of the time uh, on this flop because um, it's, and you'd think, again, going back to old old school beds under the, uh, uh, monsters under the bed sort of syndrome you think pocket aces would be just trying to get as big a bet in as possible now because they're scared of the flush but you know the pocket aces is happy to check behind some of the time uh because it is ahead that much and i guess also it's got the uh, it's got the redraw if if the person does have a flush and it's uh, also blocking remember. It's blo it's blo yeah it's blocking. very heavy blocking a lot of the ace extra which will be a lot of his continues yeah yeah Okay, so if you enjoyed uh, the topic that we went into today, I suggest two things. First of all, uh, you buy our latest book where we go into the whole GTO poker approach um, in detail. But I also suggest you get GTO Wizard. Um, there is a free trial version. You can play around with yourself to see if it's for you. It's, it's obviously not for everyone, but as I said, I use it as my main study tool. If you do decide to buy it, if you use the URL on screen, uh, you get a 10% discount.